after 40 years of being a lawyer, uh, I try not to become Sonny and Perry. <laughs> after 40 years of being a lawyer, also what I do now is atonement. There, okay? There, now we go. Right. So after 40 years of being a lawyer, what I do now is atonement. Um, I am the Reverend Jerry Hancock. I'm the director of the Christian Ministry Project of the United Church of Christ. Before my present job, I was Deputy District Attorney for Dane County, and I was the Director of Law Enforcement Services in the Department of Justice. We are all here, all of us, on behalf of wisdom in our more than 160 congregations and faith-based communities around the state to say thank you. Thank you for your support of the treatment, alternatives, and diversion programs that are now active around the state. Working together, we have saved more than a quarter of a million jail and prison days and made Wisconsin safer. That could not have happened, could not have happened without the support of this council. So thank you very much for that. The unfairness and unreliability of technology that results in an unacceptable number of verifications and the refusal to develop and implement a compassionate release program. The mission of this council is to facilitate the implementation of effective, data-driven criminal justice policies and practices that maximize justice and the safety of the public. Here are some important data that you need to be aware of. There are 2,887 2, inmates in prison in Wisconsin who are eligible for parole under old law. These inmates cost the state of Wisconsin $96 million a year. It is completely within the power of the governor, <coughs> the secretary of corrections, and the parole commission to implement a thoughtful and realistic plan for the release of these inmates. That is not being done. Today in Wisconsin, there is no meaningful consideration for people who are legally eligible for parole. The judges who sentenced them under old law assumed that the parole system would give them a fair chance to change. Maybe some have, maybe some have not. But what is true is that all old law inmates have lost their fair chance at parole. The district attorneys and the lawyers in the Department of Justice who prosecuted these cases knew and understood that parole was an option. The public defenders who represented many of these inmates understood that parole was an option. The police officers and sheriff's deputies who arrested these defendants knew that parole was an option. Everyone in the system made decisions on the assumption that parole was an integral part of that system. That assumption is being ignored. Secretary Wall, you've only been in your current position for less than three years. You weren't even in Wisconsin 20 years ago when many of these men and women were sentenced. You may not know or even care about the injustice that's going on inside your prison. But you must know about the $96 million a year that's being spent every year to keep these old law inmates in prison. And you must know from a report by your own department that Tony Strickler just mentioned that if that $96 million were invested in treatment, alternatives, and diversion programs, it would save the state of Wisconsin 
nearly $200 million. That's data, data that this council must care about. Recently, the Department of Corrections announced that about 95% of the men and women eligible for parole are violent criminals. That is not true. When they were sentenced, they were violent criminals. Some of these men and women created victims who still suffer. And we need to continue our care and concern for those victims. But the question is, the most important question is, how many of these men and women are still violent? By the Department of Corrections' own evaluation, more than 400 of these inmates are considered minimal risk. What is needed is a fair and effective parole process to determine how many more old law inmates can go home. These don't tell us that we have come to the wrong place. We have looked for justice everywhere and found it nowhere. Please don't tell us that we're talking to the wrong people. Collectively, and individually, you have the credibility, the responsibility, and most importantly, the access to reform this ineffective, inefficient, and cruel system. You are exactly the right people. Thank you. Thank you very much.